Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And on today's episode, we are gonna answer the question, how do we distinguish between a whiplash, a whiplash disorder, and a concussion? And the reason why this is so important is because concussion and whiplash symptoms or concussion and cervical injury, neck injury symptoms can overlap greatly. And so us as uh, people who see a lot of concussions and consider ourselves concussion specialists, we want to make sure are we treating someone's concussion, specifically their brain, specifically a specific part of their uh, the area in the brain, or do we want to put more focus on treating their neck? Um, and sometimes it's a 50-50 uh, draw. Sometimes we have to treat both. Uh, while one, we may be treating more of their neck, while the other, we may be treating more of the concussion or the brain. And so uh, it's really important for us to determine that. Um, and it's pretty unlikely that somebody isn't going to uh, have a combination of both during a concussion or a head injury because a lot of the times the concussion happens due to a twisting or turning or a quick uh, jarring-like action in the neck. And so we wanna make sure that one, we identify both, and then two, we treat both if necessary. And so we're gonna talk about one paper. It is a pretty simple paper from the Journal of Athletic Training. And so here it is, it's from 2016. And from the Journal of Athletic Training, it's called Cervical Injury Assessments for Concussion Evaluation. And there's a review. And so we're just gonna kind of look a little bit at um, the abstracts and key points. They have a, a table and a, and, a, and a picture that we're gonna look at uh, that I can think really help you understand what we do in order to, and why this is so important. So in the background, it says a concussion is a complex pathophysiological process induced by biomechanical forces uh, that's affecting, obviously, the brain, the central nervous system, okay? Um, besides the con a concussion, you can have a spinal cord concussion, which means it's affecting specifically the spinal cord, or you can have a brain concussion. And then cervical injuries and concussions share similar mechanisms, as I was just saying, and nearly identical symptoms, okay? Therefore, it's important uh, that we differentiate between patients with a concussion or patients with cervical injuries or both. So the objective of this was to uh, demonstrate these, these causes and symptoms, how much they overlap in patients with concussions or with cervical injury, and then provide information on clinical tests in order to differentiate between the two. Um, given that concussions and cervical injuries share similar causes and symptoms, uh, information alone cannot be insufficient. Therefore, we can't just go based on symptoms. Instead, we need clinical assessments such as cervical joint reposition hair testing, smooth pursuit neck torsion testing, head and neck differentiation, cervical flexion rotation, a physical exam of the cervical spine or neck uh, need to be performed. Okay, and I'll go through all these uh, a little bit later. So the conclusion showed that specific clinical tests should be used after a head and neck pathomechanical event to differentiate between concussion and cervical injury. And so there were five identified cervical genetic tests uh, that are recommended here at the end. Um, so the couple main key points, again, differentiating symptoms of concussion and cervical injury are vital to, um, to determining if it is a specifically a concussion or um, if it has a cervical component. These clinical tests are needed um, because they're invaluable to differentiating between what are the damage structures. Okay, so let's go down right here to the symptoms of a concussion or a cervicogenic cervical spine or neck injury. And so concussion and cervical injury can both produce headaches, both produce dizziness, tinnitus or ringing in the ear, irritability, um, so they can both produce sleep disturbances, blurred vision, neck stiffness, balance disturbances, cognitive deficits, attention deficits, and decreased isometric neck strength. So decreased strength by just holding in one specific position. Okay. On the other hand, 
concussions are more associated with chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. We're not going to talk too much about that because there's still a lot of mixed research. Um, concussion are more likely to have depression as a symptom, memory deficits as a symptom. And then cervical injury is going to have decreased cervical range of motion. So um, I always have all my patients do the neck extension, lateral flexion or lateral bending, and then uh, check the rotation as well. And so all of these we're looking for, does somebody have um, a good solid cervical range of motion or decreased? And cervical injury is going to have more decreased versus a concussion is probably going to be okay. Um, that's not always the case, but um, it's, good to, it's good to check both, right? Um, okay, so then let's look at this picture. Okay, so these are different parts of the brain that could be related to a cervicogenic injury or concussive symptoms. And so if we look at the bottom, we'll start with just the, the cerebellum, the brain stem, and the vestibular system, specifically in the inner ear. And so the cerebellum is receiving a lot of connections from the neck. The brain stem is receiving a lot of connections from the neck specifically these neck muscles. These neck muscles give proprioceptors, specifically these muscle spindles that are these proprioceptors that are sending signals up to these areas. If there's damage to these neck structures, that changes how the brain sees the neck, it changes um, how the brain is functioning, and that's why we can lead to a lot of these mixing signals um, where pa patients are getting headaches or dizziness or blurred vision from specifically a neck injury. Um, sorry about that. Then we go up even farther and we know that the brainstem and cerebellum connects to the thalamus and they connect to the cortex as well. And again, that's why we can have uh, people having things like cognitive deficits, attention deficits with a cervical injury because we're affecting the cortex. We're affecting the top part of the brain which is that attention executive function area, okay? And so it's really important that we differentiate these. And so some of the tests, this is looking at smooth pursuit neck torsion. So this test, uh, it's easier if you just look at me maybe. We are basically, in our office, we're gonna have you smooth pursuit with your eyes on a target. So maybe just with your eyes, looking left and right, okay, and looking up and down. Okay, this test is with the neck. And so we have specifically, we're looking with the eyes and neck together. And we're not only looking for possible aggravation of symptoms, but uh, me as the clinician or our doctors, we are looking at your eyes. We're looking to see if they have any irregular movements because you're moving your neck with your, uh, while well, your eyes should be staying steady to follow the dot in this case, a pencil in this picture. So that's one test for sure that we should be doing. Um, maybe I'll just flip this for everybody. Okay, so that was the smooth pursuit neck torsion test. Um, another one is the cervical joint reposition air test. So that is, we'll put a laser on your head and you'll put it on a post-it note or a dot on the wall. And then with your eyes closed, we will move your head to the right. And you need to bring it back and put that laser right in the center. You would look and you see if you put your head in the right position, okay? We'll do it to the right, we do it to the left, we do it up and down. And so we are looking to see if you know where your neck is in space, your head and neck is in space by testing this air, the cervical air test. Um, head neck differentiation test. Okay, so this one, there is a picture down low, but I'll just, um, I'll just describe it first. And so this is looking at, can with that laser on, can we have you sit straight ahead, keep that laser on a specific target on the wall and your head and neck still while you move your body to the right or to the left uh, while on a swivel chair or a chair that's moving. And so I'll show that. Uh, here in a sec, um, cervical flexion and rotation test. And so this one specifically, it's, um, 
it's being done more for like we are specifically flexing and rotating so we are looking for if there's any increase in symptoms okay because um we're looking for any increase in like a dizziness uh, or sarcogenic dizziness and then uh motor control assessment of the deep cervical flexors and extensors this one is we're we're trying to see if you can activate these deep flexors these deep neck muscles um, in the neck and the easiest way to do this is just laying down on the back um, and tucking the chin to make a double chin and then lifting the head up slightly seeing if there is stability um, in those in those deep neck flexors so those are five tests that we will do to help distinguish if it is a concussion or a um, or a neck injury and so here this is the one where is the head and neck differentiation test so we'll use a laser to keep the laser on that dot and the patient is going to rotate themselves left or right um, while they stay on that and again we're looking for are there any symptoms or also can they keep their their head uh, their leg on that point um, here's the flexion rotation test, which is done manually. Again, looking for any dizziness or any symptoms. Okay. Um, so, so that's all we got for today. Um, I think this is a really important one because a lot of people after a concussion or let's say a car accident, they get a whiplash. And so they're going to go to through traditional care because they have neck pain, headaches, they may go to a chiropractor, they may go to a PT, they may go just to their orthopedic doctor, and they are getting specifically looked up for their head and neck. Um, not too much, not many people are looking at their brain. And so we want to understand that there could be both mechanisms at hand. And so if we just treat the neck, the symptoms might not go away. Or they may go away temporarily, but always come back. And so we want to treat both the head and the neck at the same time, um, maybe one right before the other, uh, because these convergence of therapies and stabilization of both structures are necessary to improve the overall health and the outcomes in, in symptoms, whether those symptoms are headaches, dizziness, blurred vision, ringing in the ears, memory or retention problems. It's all important to address both the brain and the neck or the cervical injury. And so if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave them below as well. Thanks again and have a great day.